Hello and welcome to Dateline London. Europe's refugee crisis leads to a temporary reversal of core European ideals about the free movement in the European Union. Is this much more than financial matters, the crisis which could drive the EU to breaking point? Plus, Jeremy Corbyn as Britain's Labour Party leader. My guests today are Annalisa Piras, who's an Italian writer, Abdul Bari Atwan, who's an Arab writer and broadcaster, Alex Dean of Conservative Home, and Agnes Poirier of Marianne. Corbyn, as new Labour leader, has succeeded in one big way this week. He has dominated the news and fundamentally shaken up British politics. But is he a breath of fresh air or is he someone who could keep Labour out of power for many years to come or possibly both? I mean, how, how, do, you, how do you see him? I mean, it's been a very difficult week for him. Mm. Oh, well, um, you know, we, it's been a week. You don't know whether it's a triumph or, you know, uh, despair. Or you don't know whether it's a revolution or counter-revolution because mm. perhaps it's Labour, you know, uh, reverting to type, you know. Um, then probably um, part of, of Labour should, or the centrist, let's say, of Labour should create a new party. Mm. Um, they are Although never, they are smaller never going parties to... get punished in Britain, as we well know. Uh, well, the SPD yeah, nearly broke through. Exactly. They nearly did. But, uh, but mm. if it wasn't for the Falkland uh, war, but yeah. perhaps... They were polling mm. at nearly 50% when the Falklands were. Yeah, yeah mm. exactly. So you never know. And nobody expected, anyway, a return to Trotskyism uh, politics. It's, but it's, it's student politics. It's just that the students who voted for Corbyn doesn't, uh, don't know who can start the Trotsky. Can, can I suggest, and listening to the tone of uh, how the Prime Minister handled it this week as well, mm. It would be very foolish to underestimate any of this, though, because it was a big surprise to everybody. I take it everybody around this table that Jeremy Corbyn is the leader of the party, or it certainly was three months ago. Yeah. Secondly, uh, he, has, uh, he seems to strike a chord with some people that other politicians don't in terms of, quote, authenticity is sure. the word that's often used. So there's something going on in politics which politicians have not quite grappled with, oh, or of any party. I yeah? think there's two things. The first is that... Um, there's a strain of populism that's increasingly true across uh, many countries, and it's not a left or right issue. Donald Trump is the same kind of populist straight talker, what you see is what you get. Or UKIP, actually, Farage. Uh, well, I, yeah, Farage. but of course Farage is actually a 20-year um, European institution politician professional, and he's not a Donald Trump coming in at the last moment in, in that way. Corbyn is of a different type. He's a lifelong politician too, of course, but never having held any office of any kind of leadership, apart from, I think, a role in Islington County, Council until he became leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition. So point one is this very strange um, strain of populism which can carry you all the way to great office. So we must not underestimate that, you're, you're right. But Blair but, didn't. Blair, Blair, didn't. Blair didn't. He didn't have any, any offices before. He came, he a prime minister. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, um, yeah but he was, Blair was a sensible, uh, relatively sensible, mod, more, much more moderate person who was interested in Labour being in government, which I don't think Jeremy Corbyn is. But the second thing <laughs> that I think we need to do, on my side of the fence as a member yeah. of the Conservative Party, is, is to approach it more in sorrow than in anger. Because if we are seen, uh, and the, right now, every aspect of the media is against Jeremy Corbyn, I think justifiably, because the positions he adopts are absurd. Yeah. But if we are seen to be bullying someone that the public Hasn't really, hasn't really heard of much, very much. And the very first time they saw him probably was when he didn't sing the national anthem. That might be the, at uh, a more memorial service. Mm -hmm. That might be the first time they really noticed him. So we need to, I think we need to approach it with slightly gentler gloves than we might be inclined to, given that mm -hmm. the Prime Minister says Hamas and Hezbollah, sorry, the leader of the opposition says Hamas and Hezbollah are his friends. The shadow chancellor uh, believes in fermenting the fall of capitalism. Mm -hmm. That was his mm -hmm. hobby listed in who's who. <laughs> and they just appointed their, as their education spokesman in the Lords a conviction arsonist, Lord Watson, who you might, might have covered in the Scottish, uh, Scottish it, days. It, so, I mean, it's very easy to go over the top in attacking them. And actually, I think we need to calm back and let them f fool themselves. But I, can, I know that there are people who are readily listening to that who are thinking it's, uh, it's the London bubble, it's the mainstream parties, it's the mainstream media. Give the man a chance. And you, you've nodded towards that. Sure. You know, I'm, I'm really shocked and surprised. You have been lecturing us in the Middle East that you have to be rational and you shouldn't judge people. Wait for their actions and then judge them. So what amazed me in this country, you know, that after a week this man was elected in a very democratic way after but just, a week, years just a week ago. He's been 32 years in Parliament. Okay. Was, was because, nice because, because, you know, this is your politics here because they don't give a chance to people like him. And in the end, the people are fed up 
of this stagnation of the British politics. And they decided to give their vote to somebody else. What it is, is it? a fresh air. You know, it's, it is not due to Judge Alex. It is the people. who He was elected by 60% of the Labour no, of, his, of his party. Okay? Of I'm his party. I'm entitled so we have to, to respect a, that. I'm entitled to a view as a British citizen who's a resident in this country and votes here too. But I'm perplexed by this kind of chippiness that you, you have about Britain lecturing you and telling you you have to wait. What is it you're so concerned about? And wh why do you have this prolonged grudge against the West, which affects everything up to and including your view on Jeremy Corbyn's leadership of the Labour Party? It's a bit weird. It's, you know, you, you, are, you are making it personal now. You, know, just you did. No one no, in the West no, was lecturing no, you about giving no, people time. No, they do. They do. They do, actually. But what, what amazed me, okay, this man is you know, elected and he has a policy. He is assembly, just, just actually uh, assembled his uh, shadow cabinet and he actually incorporated the people who were against him uh, in, in the party, who actually were a candidate against him. So let us, let us give him a chance. Well, it, is, it is a fresh air. Let us, let us listen to his views and, and discuss it in open. He, he actually changed his mind in several, in several issues. He apologized for certain things like the national anthems. So let us, let us listen um, to him. There are some parallels with Beppe Grillo in, uh, in Italy. I mean, how, how do you see it and how, how does he perform on the big stage? Well, of course, we hear a lot about new politics, but that's not new for Italy because the first one who played the card of authenticity was a certain Silvio Berlusconi 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm who I am. Another outsider. Uh, yeah, and, uh, I'm who I am, and, and uh, you have to take me for what I am. But uh, that was more than 20 years ago, and at the time there was incredulity which uh, is uh, what we see now, and I would uh, strongly suggest that people start taking uh, Jeremy Corbyn seriously, because that's what happened with Berlusconi. Nobody was taking him seriously, and it ended up not that well. <laughs> so but Some people uh, didn't get the joke in the end, because yeah. he was a very successful at getting elected as Prime Minister. Very successful, and he was authentic, and authenticity works, and it works even better now than it was uh, 20 years ago. I must say that I have a wonderful memory of Jeremy Corbyn because uh, I used to um, talk to him quite a lot when I arrived in London 17 years ago as a foreign journalist. <coughs> and uh, he was uh, the only MP that I met. He was incredibly generous with foreign journalists. He was making time. He was very helpful. I have the memory of someone of great integrity and generosity. And it doesn't surprise me that people trust him and have given him the mandate because uh, for years we have heard that people don't trust politicians anymore. And actually, someone come along that has this amazing capacity to inspire trust, and everybody's laughing. So I think that it's important. Well, no, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say everybody's laughing. No. A, lo a lot of people are people, sneering. No, people are sneering. perplexed. They are perplexed. They are surprised. They are stupefied. But, you know, he's the, now the head of the, the principal party of the opposition. He's, for 30 years, he's made dissent and rebellion his raison d'être. Okay? Mm -hmm. so ne but now Precisely. he has to inspire loyalty, discipline. That's what you do in the party. Yes, okay. so exactly. It's going to be a huge task. And I have and to I'm say, not laughing, I'm just And the okay. economics are actually not that bad, apparently. I'm going to have to say <laughs> goodbye. That's it for Daylight London for this week. A lot of agreement. As you can see, you can comment on the issues raised in the programme on Twitter at Gavin Esther. We're back next week at the same time. Please make a date with Dateline. Goodbye. <laughs>